then I have Benam Tabrizi, who has been teaching in Stanford for 25 years. He has more experience that I can even put into a bag when it comes to transformation. I collected over 1,000 transformation cases, worked with over 100 organizations, has advised uh, as widely as Barack Obama and Amazon. Benam, I want to come to you. Uh, you have done lots of research in these areas, well, collected interesting evidence, and I, some of it, uh, I think, points at really counterintuitive findings. Maybe you can share some, some of those. I'd really be interested in that. Sure. Uh, when I was 22 years old, I, was, I just finished my master's in computer science, high achiever, started working in this prestigious place, uh, IBM Research Center, and was working on improving the manufacturing process within IBM. So I came up with this idea. It was a low-hanging fruit about how we could change the manufacturing process within IBM that we could save IBM millions of dollars. It wasn't directly related to my job, but it was something that we could easily implement. My manager at the time sat me down and said, Benham, IBM is just this big log, if you will. It's, it's going through this very slow moving river. You and I are a couple of small ants on this log. <laughs> and we're barely trying to survive. As you can imagine, this 22-year-old just shrank and shrank as he was talking about what this organization was all about. So that became the defining moment of my life. I wanted to spend the rest of my life helping people connect to their power. And I decided I want to transform 100 million people and connect to their power. Big ideas requires big people within organizations. Small companies are organizations with figuratively big people. As organizations grow, people feel less visible, less heard of, less interested, and less accountable. So, based on evidence research that I've done in the past 30 years, I've come up with three counterintuitive results that are fundamental truths that to this date, I believe it holds true. Uh, I went to Stanford, studied uh, organization, social psychology, and strategy, and I studied a large number of uh, organizations, and what I found is organizations during very uncertain time when they iterated and created prototyping were actually able to get to market much faster, which led to the, what we call foundation or what we call design thinking and agile development these days. Uh, those of you who remember, around 2000, we had this hype about re-engineering. And I got really curious to study re-engineering and why, at that time, there were actually 90% of re-engineers that failed. And when I did the post-mortem, there were some root causes that were quite shocking. And to this date, it shows up in a lot of transformation. One of them was these transformations were sequential. Another one, they were, it was really slow. And also, it was led by armies of consultants. <laughs> now, these three events shrinks the organization and people inside the organization. So in 2007, I wrote a book called Rapid Transformation, which is a practical cookbook about how do you get the people in your organization to author the change, to author the future, so that in a very rapid, parallel way, you can engage a large number of people to affect change based on data and based on lots and lots of examples. As I went to organizations and I, I worked with organizational rapid transformation, I found that a huge element was missing there. And that was what goes on in the mindset of the leaders and people in the organization. So I started working on this research called personal transformation. I wrote a book in 2013 called Inside Out Effect, which is a guide to personal transformation. And the idea here is that if you connect the inside out of every employee, if you align the inside 
of every employee to the outside, with the outside in, you get this virtuous cycle that will end up with a flywheel effect or a, or a velocity where you can actually bend the arc of the ecosystem to your favor. So this is, this is really critical in terms of making sure that you do that. Now, organizations such as Microsoft has done it for all their employees. Amazon has done it for different departments. Google is applying that. A company in Thailand, KBank, has done it for all their employees. It truly creates a huge, if you will, alignment of North Stars. Currently, I'm working on a research that addresses this issue that uh, uh, Thomas brought up, and that is all organization, every now and then, what they need is they need a reset. You need to take this tanker ship and turn it quite a bit, and you get people aligned and so forth. And how can you create a culture of an organization where it could be agile, flat, whereas any transformation, it's more uh, not a huge, huge transformation, but if you will, adjustment, if you will. And I'm hoping to present that next year. Uh, let me end by, when I was, if I was 22 today, I'd be a Gen Z. I would have been born in 21st century, right? I know most of us, at least me, I underestimate the Generation Z's power. And the Generation Z's today are much more courageous and powerful than I was when I was 22 years old. Let me give you two examples. On the one side of Austria, you have Gen Generation Z, especially the women in their 17, 18, 19-year-olds, who are taking on one of the most draconian countries in the world, Iran. They're risking their lives, they're dying in numbers, and they're trying to change and transform that company to a future that respects them and, and helps them be equal with men. Men in that country are supporting them, and the women across the world, in hundreds of millions, are also supporting this movement. Women are a force of nature in change, and we need to be able to apply that to our organization, and I see that day in and day out. Another side of Austria, across the Atlantic, you have United States. Recently, we had an election. Pollsters thought things are going to turn out one way. The Gen Z, especially the Gen Z women, when it, things related to women issues, they completely changed the arc of the politics of the uh, United States, and they came up with results that, you know, shocked even the pollsters. So to end my conversation, I'd like to say that there's a lot of emphasis in KPI, and I think what's important is that the goalpost is moving, and we need to not be so focused on KPI. We need a new definition for KPI. KPI should stand for keep people inspired, keep people interested, <laughs> keep people involved. Thank you so much. Benam, I'm going to ask you, yeah, you brought it up yourself. Are these young women going to stop Trump? <laughs> Don't underestimate the power of women and especially the young ones, and Z Generation Z. It's, it's very different than you and I. You and I may not understand them, but by the way, the way they came together in the United States is through TikTok. Yeah. The way they're coming together in Iran is through filtering and coming with VPNs and through Instagram and TikTok and others. They are very different than us, but they're courageous. In 2025, they'll be one-third of your organizations. We better realize their power, and we, we need to create context where they can bring their best out.